Oh, it's got that red line around the screen so you can see it's recording. You see that? Today is a day where I am vlogging with the R6 Mark II. We're going out, linking up with my boy Ben. He's about to pull up in a second. We're going to shoot a video. I'm using this R6 Mark II. We're going to see what I can get out of it. Looks a little blown out. That probably was all blown out right there. But I'm not gonna lie, this camera actually is looking super sharp and clean so far. I'm excited to test it out some more. And I'm also on that ghost today. My boy Johnny would be proud. j Hawk. There's a bunch of Sony users in here conversating and they're bonding over Sony <laughs> while I'm shooting with this uh, Canon here. <laughs> we're about to go out, we're about to create some stuff. Ben's working on a project. I'm gonna help him get some shots. And if I can show you all, I'll show you all some of it. I'm using my 24 millimeter to vlog today. I used to use this all the time. And I just remember now how icy it is with the full frame at a 1.4. It might get a little bit in the audio, but it's, it's so buttered. It looks so good. Well, we just got kicked off the first location. Welcome to Atlanta. <laughs> We're literally outside of the city. This is the second location, but it's literally right behind these trees right here where we just were. We got kicked out aggressively. And when I say aggressively, I'm saying like, it was an issue. We had a, we had a little disagreement and I was just a little frustrated about it because it's like, bro, we're literally outside of Atlanta in the hood and it was an issue about trespassing or not asking an owner. And it's like, bro, come on, bro. Like, come on, stop. But anyway, we left there, came up the street a little bit to this location, and this location actually looks better. I got it at 1.4 aperture, so you can't really see it, but the background right here looks pretty dope. Let me help my guy Ben. Let me not worry about people trying to ruin the creative process. I'm sorry, but you're gonna need a permit here. <laughs> I'm about to call the guy back and just ask if we can come back. <laughs> it's like, sir, you said to call first. <laughs> By the way, I just realized that this ND filter is making my shots too warm. I'm not a warm shot type of guy and I've kind of been totally oblivious to what this has been doing to my white balance and my footage. Um, it's kind of crazy. I didn't realize that this had a warm tint to it. That's why my colors have been shifting. Maybe it wasn't the R5. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> This right here is the Amaran 300C, and it's one of the many lights that I use in my creative space or on any type of project to light it up nicely. 300 stands for 300 watts, C stands for color. Amaran is just one of the greatest lighting companies that you could ever even <laughs> know of. This all white design is super sleek. The buttons are really nice. It has a nice fan in it, as you can see right here. And 300 watts is just powerful. You can use this in your office. You can use this on a music video set. This light right here, this is the 150C. This is an even more affordable version of this. But this one right here is powerful enough to pretty much get anything done. 300 watts is pretty much all you need for most scenarios. Pairing my Amaran lights with the Light Dome SE gives me perfect soft lighting and gives my office an aesthetic look. Having these lights is what really inspires me too. This is all white design. It just works good in the office. The walls are white. Yeah, this light just makes everything better, makes it look good. If you want to get one, there's a link down below. Thank you Amaran for sponsoring this video. Nice soft light. It's crazy to think that I was gonna delete this footage. What's up, bro? What's good? How you feeling? Good. 
Good, good. You done all right? Yeah, yeah. Good to see you, dog. Good to meet you, man. After driving to Charlotte, meeting up with new friends, and even paying my day one friend Tino to come out there and help me document us all hanging out together, I couldn't just let this one go. This was supposed to be a project about why creative friends are vital. We shot this back in 2022, and I was going to throw it all away because I lost interest in it. But I get so inspired every time I come back to seeing us all hanging out. I had to share how dope this day was and why having creative friends really make a huge difference. Long story short, I went to meet two new friends, Ryan, a dope photographer that I met on IG that's based in Charlotte, and Jazz, a former mentee from my mentorship group who was very, very eager to meet new creators and build his skills. First, we had to get some fire food and chit chat, getting to know each other. Then we mobbed around the city, stopping through this iconic alleyway uptown Charlotte, capturing some pictures and each other's ideas. Then obviously Ryan had to show us this rooftop perspective that only the local goats are familiar with. This spot was fire. Good looks, Ryan. This was also everybody's first time meeting each other. And I was just curious how this would impact us all to link up, explore the city and just create together. And honestly, we laughed our asses off and we bonded. It's something special about having friends that understand how we think and how we see the world as creative individuals. We're different. We see things different and we need similar energies and understandings around us to feed off of. But if you don't have any creative friends right now, I encourage you to reach out to some new people online, search around using some hashtags, go out, meet new people, whatever you got to do. It's these friendships and these relationships that's going to help motivate and push you as a creative individual. We now have linked up for the first time in person and how, how was your experience today? Dude, it's, it's unbelievable. I don't know what it's like to interact with professional photographers or videographers in my area mm -hmm. in the specific niche that we're in, you know, creative photo shoots, video shoots. Right. And to have one of the best to do it with, it's, it's crazy, man. It's That's dope. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. That's what I wanted. I wanted it to feel good and I wanted to see how it affected you all and like how, how it made y'all feel because I think it's important to have creative friends. Would you say the same? Yeah. Oh, for sure, man. Because I don't know uh, what book it was, but I read a book that said, you know, if you get two like-minded people who are working towards the same goal, you're going to create a mastermind. Have you been having fun? Is it recording? Yeah. <laughs> Is it recording? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, you keeping this in? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is me struggling. This is just fun, man. What about you? How's your experience been today? Just linking up and making stuff. I've loved it so far. It was really refreshing, you know, meeting up with like-minded creatives. Yeah. Really discussing, I don't know, I guess cameras, the world, life, all that. Yeah. Um, different things, I guess, about photography, videography, whatnot. Yeah. Um, what's really been fun so far has been, you know, going to different spots and really seeing how each person I guess perceives, you know, yeah. a location. Really oh, seeing, yeah. okay, you have your set of eyes, I have mine, you know, you have maybe ideas, bouncing ideas off of each other, yeah. and really seeing, you know, what we can create together. Nah, 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 this is beautiful. Yo, we're out here tonight. It's nice and misty um, here in Atlanta at the varsity, because it's just a vibe, especially when it's like rainy. But these low light shots are looking pretty, I don't know, they kind of look grainy. The autofocus is looking super shifty on this camera. I can't believe how much it's been like hunting for the subject. I thought that the autofocus was good on these new cameras, but I feel like it was better on 2019 cameras, bruh, honestly. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter which Canon camera I'm using, I can make it look good. So I don't even know what why I'm doing this. <laughs> All right, we out here in Decatur. We got a shoot today. I'm gonna try to take some flicks, maybe some clips. I don't know, but definitely I'm taking some flicks on this camera to see the quality, see how they looking. So let's get it. Let's, let's start the music. Let's go. Thank you. 
So now it's been about a week since I've been using this R6 Mark II and I've noticed a few things with it. This autofocus, the uh, face tracking integrated into the other zone autofocus section. So the one point square face tracking mixed with that or whole area mixed with that. Personally, I don't like how it's integrated. I wish there was just an option for face tracking and I wish it was just the option for one point and just the option for a certain um, area. Reason being, I use one point a lot. So if I have it set to one point, I have face tracking on, if I get up like this, and it loses track of my face or it's in the dark and it loses track of my face or whatever, then it goes to wherever that box, that one point box is on the screen. So what I found out is using this whole area autofocus with the face tracking is good because if it loses my face like that, it locks straight onto whatever's in the in front of my face. So it's cool, I feel like it tr like switches a lot and it hunts a lot. I don't know how to fix that. If you know, drop it down in the comments for other people to check out, but I cannot figure it out. It's just something that I notice about the camera. Other than that, the photos are super icy. Uh, Canon cameras I take photos with, they're always icy. They're pretty icy on this one. I'm not complaining really much about the colors. Auto white balance shifts really, really hard. So I've been using Kelvin. Typically the newer cameras, I have to kind of set the Kelvin. I can't really uh, depend on auto white balance like I used to be able to with like DSLR cameras and stuff like that. Now this is just my opinion. This is just how I feel about it. I'm not trying to tell anybody that it's right or wrong or anything like that. This is just how I feel about the camera. I think it's actually a really good camera, but I would actually own this camera, yo. I really would.